Yeah, so that was a good trick just to keep me hostage to have the final remarks at the end as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's a little difficult because the most important things is not the technology, it's really the culture. It is, it is not really uh, how to regulate, but what is our human role on this planet. And it's still a lot of social and cultural things, yeah? like uh, actually we cannot do recycling in a way because of cultural reasons. Yeah? We cannot use something which has been used by somebody else. Yeah? So as you could hear people talk about virgin materials yeah? and without giving you details you cannot recycle a virgin. Yeah? So what's gone, it's gone. Yeah? So how can you talk about virgin materials instead of primary raw materials, secondary raw materials? And there are a lot of these flaws here, yeah? like, like the life cycle thing. And, and I can go through these, these presentations today and, and, and sure, I have some difficulties when you are taking carpets into children's toys, yeah? And, and because they are never intended to be used for that purpose. And, and you get a design award for that. Yeah. Instead of telling the carpet industry that their carpet and it's their role to take care of it, actually, and your legislation can do a lot. Yeah. Why do you uh, make you allow that carpets can end up in landfills? <laughs> yeah, you can stop this by legislation if you want to do so. And the same thing is, you, it, it is a little difficult because I'm talking about something else when I'm talking about cradle to cradle, and then you come up with all this avoidance, minimization, guilt management stuff with that. And it's essential to do so, but it makes it a little difficult for me uh, to, to um, say, okay, um, why do you do this stuff in the same way like it has been done 30 years already in Europe? Yeah? And, it, it, and you can now repeat what has been done in Europe, but but does it make sense? How can you, for example, export unprocessed wood into China and then buy the wood products back instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, it's our stuff and we built an industry around it. And, and so I would recommend, if you allow me from the outside, to more to look where is your real strength in economy, where is your real strength? It's, in being an island where you can decide about the material flows. And I didn't hear from you about, for example, why, what is the obstacle that you can make paper really compostable? Because then you could use paper for a lot of packaging, actually, in, in printing. So is there anything what stops you from doing so? Uh, where is the obstacle to say, hey, we want to see buildings where indoor air quality is better than outside air? Uh, what stops you from that? What is difficult for you to understand? We want to see an industry which doesn't mean uh, that we accumulate all these chemicals in human milk. Yeah? Uh, uh, you didn't give me really reasons for it. And, and you continue with reducing, avoiding, minimizing. And it, this is only rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic if you do so. Yeah? It keeps you busy. And it, you only spend time. It's, it's necessary for learning. I don't question that. It's necessary as a design exercise. Uh, but it's not necessary for the future, really. It's nice to look at blockchain of mixed textiles. But <laughs> what digital means, you need to define what it is. Otherwise, you're applying a new method to an old product. And this doesn't make sense. We need to define what is in there. And you can talk about Miele as a washing machine uh, yeah, prolonging the lifetime, but, but it doesn't make sense to use a washing machine for more than 10 years. Under no circumstance, because then the innovation never reaches the market. So why don't you talk about new business models, like selling 3,000 times of washing? Yes. So this washing machine just has a counter in it, which has 5,000 points. 90 degrees Celsius is 3.60, 2.60 points 
30 degrees room temperature is one point. Yeah. And then you pay per wash. And then you don't need to make things which last forever. You pay for 3,000 times of washing. And then you can combine it with technical innovation. You can recover the detergent because 95% of the detergent is only used for kinetic reasons to make the process fast. But it's not really consumed. And this is already starts. We, when you talk about the consumer, yeah, that it means, okay, we behave like rats. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're consuming the planet, but you're not consuming a washing machine. We only use it. Yeah. And and when we can when we can recover the detergent by an ultrafiltration process, then a detergent can be ten times more expensive. You don't need to use the cheapest stuff. You can use the best materials. Then you can make a washing machine which has only five types of plastics, which are worth to be collected. And and the key thing is. In which I really ask you to keep in mind that you don't need to do the same things. In Africa, people didn't first make stationary phones. Yeah? They started with mobile phones. Yeah? So you don't need to go through all these mistakes and processes in there. You can start now to say, OK, we use the learning from different countries, and we now do things which is not connected to the, the environment and the Ministry of Environment. Yeah? Um, okay, by the way, I liked her lipstick, really, yeah. Uh, so it's a nice, a lipstick is the nicest example of uh, the, it explaining the difference between efficiency and effectiveness, yeah. So let's take, for, let's take, for example, flowers, yeah, when your girlfriend is really angry about you and it works both sides now, which is nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when your boyfriend is really angry about you, it's the same. 50 roses, completely inefficient, but very effective, yeah. And a woman eats about 6.3 kilograms of lipstick during her lifetime. Uh, completely inefficient. It doesn't work both sides still t today, yeah, but it might change. Uh, a, a lipstick is com completely inefficient, but very effective. Yeah? And you could see this, this amazing red lipstick yeah, shows that there is some hope for the future. But, but overall, I, I said, it, it's clear, don't wait for the government. Yeah? Even their nice intentions, but just to reduce the amount of waste to go to landfills, yeah, it only keeps you busy. It, and you lose the vitality to change your system if you do so. You're paying more and more for repairing things. So what is really against to say today, hey, from today we will work, at least we start with all, there are so many sustainability experts here. We start with our sustainability report being printed in this country because more than half of the sustainability reports are already uh, printed in China. <laughs> yeah, and it's so nice that you talk about, oh, China is now really doing something by not allowing to import waste. No, they are exporting their waste. Yeah? <laughs> their products are waste. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And, so, and you let them ship it here instead of saying, hey, wait a minute, we just buy 10 years of using this TV and it stays yours, dear people in China. Why should we process it? because we didn't ask for it. We won't have 10 years of watching TV instead of, yeah, or let's say 10,000 hours of watching TV. You pay per hour watching, yeah, and let the Chinese keep their waste, yeah. Why should you own it? Why do you do something with it, yeah? They are exporting their waste and you're processing it, yeah, when you only want to have the service of it. So what does it say? From today on, we are printing only paper yeah, and, and, and all our printed material and packaging is designed to be compostable. What does it stop, stop you from that? Yeah, what, what, where is the obstacle? Where is the problem with it to do so? If you don't do so, you will lose your whole printing industry because the Chinese will print your catalogs, they will print your uh, promotion materials, they print your sustainability reports, and. You do high-tech waste management for Chinese, Chinese hazardous waste, yeah, because that's what paper is. So that's why it's true not to demonize just, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just to look at plastic. No, the paper, it's the same problem. Yeah. The textiles, it's the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> the 20,000 chemicals being used in textiles. Yeah. And even Greenpeace is doing a detox campaign. Yeah, they make a list of 200 chemicals which should go out of these yeah. <laughs> then the industry comes with another 200 chemicals. Yeah. 
and it only keeps us busy. They're all signing this declaration of that. In my age, I would better do a Botox campaign instead of a detox campaign. <laughs> it, it would help me a little more. Yeah. So think about really about positive definition and not durability, but a digital world needs defined use periods, not durability. You need to know when you can get the material back. And the key thing is just start not with recovering the materials, because the value of a material is less than 5% in a product. Yeah? Even it's running out of the raw materials, the, the real cost of the metals in a mobile phone is less than $2. Yeah? Uh, but, but the components are the value. So we need to design things that we can get recover the components not just the material. So how can we make reversible material connections? How can we really design it? And the nice thing is just, which I said, hey, having met David yeah, and looking at these three-dimensional sculptures, yeah, uh, that was just worth the whole trip here. What a great person. And if you see that design can play such a key role, why don't you make the, the country just the center of cradle to cradle design. Yeah, start with that, make a, a university position about it. Then the designers actually can drive it. And then I agree with you, all the things which we talked today are important as transitional things. But if we make them, them the real goal, then we will perpetuate making the wrong things perfect, and then they are perfectly wrong. Why don't you start just with things like healthy toilet paper? Yeah, just, yeah. Why don't you come up and then you can do this by public purchasing, you can help each other, you can pool materials, and you can re really make a difference with that. And then it all, what I heard today, is important, but it's a transitional thing. Yeah? So it's not the long-term perspective, but it's the learning curve. It helps you to really to, to make a difference with that. But um, you need to, do, to start now with it. Yeah? because otherwise you will increase the recycling rate and you will increase the collecting of paper which is not worth to be collected. And, and then you, we lose the, the opportunity to make a difference. And the real strength of this place here is that people know each other yeah? and that they really can support each other. And you have a strong identity, you have a, such a friendly culture, mm. yeah? you have such a way to support each other, to, to uh, learn from each other, to come together, uh, that you are, this is a unique place. And uh, why don't you build on that strength for true innovation, not for just doing the same things what others do as well. And then you could be the innovation engine yeah, for a true cradle-to-cradle -cradle economy. Uh, don't fall back into circular economy, because that's just boring. And it's, as I said, it's linear thinking in cycles. A digital world needs defined use periods, technosphere and biosphere, because it's a different digital management, and you need to know what it is. And then the government could make a list of recommended textile chemicals, for example, that, hey, we want to see in textiles the following chemicals. We want to see in building materials the following chemicals. There are 300 additives being used in concrete. 200 of them are really nasty. So why should you do concrete recycling with nasty ingredients in that? Yeah? But 100 of them, porous builders, emulsifiers, work quite nicely. So it's not about against concrete, it's about innovation. Why, what stops you from saying tomorrow, we, as a government, we only want to use pure iron and carbon in building steel? Just by your intention. You even don't need to regulate it. Just by saying, this is where we want to go. Yeah? And then you invite people to show you, to come up. It's more that the public good is more for being a platform for innovations and regulating it all. Just to say, this is what we want. And then there are so many young people who want to make a difference. And yeah, if you take it like that, then this was a great start today. And I really admire your discipline, your patience, your way to lit sit here. Uh, and sure, for me, it was a good exercise because normally you look, you're really valuable normally when you are doing your speech and then you're leaving because you're so important. Yeah. Today I was here the whole day to listen what you're doing and sometimes I need to listen as well. I just cannot only talk. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity.
it's next level stuff. Um, thank you so much again. Thanks to the organisers. A big thank you to um, uh, uh, 3R uh, Group and uh, ThinkStep. Uh, and some final thoughts uh, from, uh, from our team here. Um, well, thank you uh, so, so much for that, Wallace. But wow, uh, what a day. I, I don't know how you're all feeling, but I'm feeling both energized and completely exhausted. Trying to keep up with all these um, themes um, and hearing about what, what everyone's doing. Um, you know, it's a, big, it's a big topic. You know, we're talking about trying to flip a whole economy here from a linear to circular. And we try to sort of cover uh, as much as we can in, 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 in that day. And it's been a, an absolute pleasure um, working, working with Paul and your, and your team putting this together. And Paul will come up, um, come up in a minute. But um, just, just w I mean, what this is illustrating um, is that you know we sold out uh, today we had people texting me trying to get in i said no i'm sorry there's there's, there's no more space and so there's incredible momentum around uh, circular economy. And, um, you know, uh, interesting, uh, you know, we're, we're not necessarily wedded to, that, to the terminology because I think what, we, what we're looking for is that paradigm shift from doing uh, less harm to doing um, more good. But, you know, so, so that, uh, we need to sort of take that momentum uh, because we're really at nascent stages uh, with, with circular economy. And we need to start to, and we should already be seeing, but on a, on a larger and mainstream scale, move into that implementation stage. And of course, we know that's, um, that's hard. Um, but you know, I just want to say briefly that uh, the, the circular economy accelerator is basically a, a platform to help organizations and New Zealand as a whole uh, move forward towards, towards a more circular economy. And for those who aren't already engaged in, in the work, I'd really encourage you uh, to, to, get in, to, to get involved. We're powered by the SBN, and that's quite a powerful engine. Um, you can get involved uh, with uh, live projects right now. We've, we've talking, we're working with many of you in this room about trying to create a new plastics economy in New Zealand that works. We've got emerging initiatives like the Re Institute of Remanufacture and Reuse. We've got a whole suite of uh, more events um, coming up where we showcase emerging circular solutions. We can continue and build on this collaboration, which is a, you know, a, a, the theme that we've been hearing. And I think to get to a circular economy, we're going to have to take collaboration to you know, levels we've never even dreamt of uh, to get whole systems um, working together. We've got resources like the Circular Economy Model um, Office Guide. Uh, many of you in this room are involved in putting together. We've got some great case studies of, of companies using that, like Studio Pacific Architecture, on our, on our website. And uh, you know, there's a team, team of us. We can, um, we can help you on your individual journeys. And a big part of that is being able to put you in direct contact with the um, experts in, in the various fields that we need to work towards in the circular economy uh, who are also part of the membership. And of course, you know, like the likes of our sponsors, ThinkStep and, and 3R, they're, they're, prime, um, they're prime examples of, of, of that. So, I mean, we've, the momentum's there. We know that the prize, and you know, hark back to the, the, the uh, 8.8 billion dollar opportunity for Auckland that we talked about. You know, GDP. We know it's flawed, but um, that's 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 a big opportunity. We've got collectively the the knowledge in the room. We're building those uh, connections, and we really uh, have got this opportunity to um, to make it circular, New Zealand. And I'm going to be really quick because it's a long day and we all need a beer. Um, I would like to thank all of you for coming along today. I think it's, uh, it's incredibly important. I'd like to recognise some of the kōrero here today. I, I loved hearing from uh, Kiri from Countdown talking. She said she wants to take that plastic away and I think there's a great analogy I saw in The Guardian was that if your house was flooding, you wouldn't grab a mop and start mopping up, you'd turn the tap off. And so we actually need to look at, at consumption. We need to do these things. Uh, better, and we, the word that sort of sprung out to me today is collaboration, 
And collaboration is something which is really easy to say and much, much harder to do, particularly when we're working within a, in a competitive environment. And we always pride ourselves in New Zealand of these things that we talk about. We say we're a small, connected nation. But actually, I think we need to do better with that. I think we need to be more connected. We need to be more genuine with our collaboration. We need to put some of those competitive barriers aside and work together to get scale in this small island nation. So my key message is, let's move beyond talk. If you just come here, get inspired for a few hours, or maybe depressed, then go home and smoke a joint in your bath, like Wyler <laughs> suggested then we've failed. The purpose of today is to say there's an incredible opportunity here. Let's get on and do something for Aotearoa. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to our speakers and to our participants. Thank you for all of the team that made this happen, both from uh, Wastemans and from SBN. Um, please join us for a drink in the foyer. There will be food. Jenny and my team here runs Love Food Hate Waste. She always says there can't be any food waste left over, so make sure you take it away. So, a piti hono, tātai hono, rato te hanga mātou ki a tātou. Tātou te hanga, ora ki a tātou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Thank you.